Jetzt hatte ich noch ein anderes Video, was mir in die Timeline gespielt wurde, was ich gerne gucken wollte. Und der Titel war So you want to start Sim Racing? Watch this first. Da bin ich gespannt. Welcome to the Sim Racing Den. As the title suggests, you may have clicked on this video because you're either considering getting into Sim. Die Buttonbox ist äh, aber anders schick. Ui, okay. Oh, okay, hier ist noch Woll. Mm -hmm. Schön. Sim Racing. Planning to upgrade your current setup or maybe know nothing about it but are curious. This video will summarize some important things before diving in and purchasing your hardware. So why should you listen to me? Well, listen, I'm not an expert by any means, but I have dedicated a lot of my time to sim racing over the last four years, building my personal setup, researching and keeping up to date with the latest sim racing games, and testing different hardware and accessories on the market. I also struggled when I started out, unsure of what route to go. I've used both console or PC, I've tried different display options, struggled with what... Oh, dieses Battle Bezel Free Kit, man, ey! Oh, ich will's nicht kaufen! Aber ich, das Ding, pass auf, wir haben folgendes Problem. Wenn die Monitore gewechselt werden, bin ich schon sehr stark gewillt, für die Inversion wie dieses Kit zu kaufen. Aber ich muss zwei kaufen. Und das ärgert mich. Cockpit Und das möchte ich eigentlich gar nicht. With, or what hardware ecosystem to build out my setup with. If I were to start all over again, I would consider some different things that I'll share with you. I'd say I've learned a lot along the way and made some mistakes too that ended up costing me more in the long run. And hopefully this video will help you avoid some of those mistakes and in some way, if you're just unsure or overwhelmed with where to start or what things to even consider, this may serve as a helpful guide or checklist. Of course, this won't be a buyer's guide telling you what products are best to buy, but simply the things to consider before doing your research and purchasing. I realize budget will play a big part, but ultimately what you want to get out of the hobby and how to maximize your budget regardless of how much you want to spend. This video will be on the longer side. So sip. Die Buttonbox ist wirklich sehr hübsch. Ui, da eine Seite noch schön rangemountet. Das sieht nach äh, 3D-Druck aus. Das ist aber wirklich hübsch. Hat er schön gemacht. Back, relax, grab a drink or snack and enjoy. First, let me discuss the five categories that I'll cover here. Number one, PC or console. This is one of the first decisions you'll likely need to make and will dictate some of your hardware choices. Ja gut, die Frage ist ziemlich simpel. Also wirklich die Frage, ob man auf PC oder Konsole gehen soll, ist relativ simpel, da du auf PC einfach eine größere Auswahl hast. Wenn du jetzt nicht seit ewig und drei Tagen schon PC-Gamer bist und bist auf Konsole, okay. Aber auf Konsole hast du echt nicht viel Auswahl. Gran Turismo, ACC, Forza und dann hört es aber auch auf. Keine schönen Liegen etc. pp. Everything starts here, so I'll discuss some pros and cons of each. Number two, wheelbase and manufacturer ecosystems. This can be one of the most overwhelming decisions, especially in 2023, with more players in the market now that the number of options has increased. So I'll break down some of the key brands and discuss cross compatibility as well as belt driven wheelbases versus direct drive ones. Number three, pedals. These are often overlooked, but are just as important as the wheel itself. Pedals directly affect your performance and ultimately your enjoyment of the hobby. There are also several different types of pedal technology precisely when it comes to the most critical pedal, the brake. Number four, cockpits and mounting, the foundation to which everything is mounted to. There are many options here and things to consider and I'll discuss some thoughts I have around future-proofing yourself. The cockpit decision should often be considered after deciding on the wheelbase and pedals to ensure it's suitable for your desired equipment. I'll discuss several scenarios here to consider. Number five, displays. Lastly, but equally important, I will help you consider some essential questions when choosing a display, like a gaming monitor or TV, triple versus single screen, what refresh rate is best, flat, curved, or ultra wide, and also discuss stands and mounting options to consider. One of the very first decisions you'll likely need to make when it comes to starting sim racing is how you plan to play the games themselves, and thus will also determine what equipment will be compatible. Oh, so like, 
also Entschuldigung, dass ich unterbreche, die Kabelboxen sind, also ich, davor hätte ich wirklich Angst. Oh, wenn ich alles in so eine Kabel... Oh, da hätte ich wirklich Angst. Das würde ich... Ähm, nee, da kommt mein innerer Elektromonk und der ist schon echt klein. Der... Mm -mm. Parable. Several factors will likely influence this decision. One being budget, obviously. And two being whether you already own a gaming PC or an Shit. Xbox or PlayStation console. Some context for you first. When I first started sim racing, I did not own a PC at the time. I only had a Mac at home for productivity stuff. But I did own an Xbox Series X. I wasn't sure how deep at the time I planned to go into this hobby and also didn't fully understand the differences between using a console versus a PC for the purpose of sim racing. I can tell you it wasn't long before I switched to a gaming PC and there are a few reasons why. Alter, wie sehen denn Computer heutzutage alle aus? Meiner sieht immer noch so aus wie früher. Was haben die denn da alle für Displays drinne und fancy Leuchtestab und... Okay. The first thing to note is that using a console will likely limit what racing titles you can play. For example, games like iRacing are only available on PC. If this is a title you're interested in for its extensive online capabilities, then you won't be able to play this on an Xbox or PlayStation. However, there are several titles that are supported on both console and PC. For example, like F1 2022, Assetto Corsa, and even ACC. Still, with a title like Assetto Corsa, you won't have the full ability to run mods using the very popular content manager program, which in my opinion ist, glaube ich, ein Sprachfehler, oder? Even ACC. Still, with a title like Assetto Corsa, ah, okay, you won't have the full ability to run mods using the very popular content manager program, which in my opinion was a huge reason why I switched to PC, as this game has so much more to offer from the addition of the graphics, car and track mods, a lot of which are free to use. However, you may be only interested in titles like Gran Turismo 7 on PlayStation or Forza Horizon for Xbox, and in this case, the console might be precisely what you're looking for. But there's no doubt that for the most realistic simulation experience, you will find this on PC. Something else to consider is performance of these titles. As it relates to force feedback, for example, it's only sometimes consistent. For example, a PC can... <laughs> Wieder nichts passiert, das finde ich ja so geil gerade. Einfach, du siehst ihn nur rudern, da wackelt nicht. <lacht> Wie gut ist das denn, ey? Can relay more detailed data and telemetry about the sim to the, ist da auch Force Feedback drin? the wheel and in turn provide a more detailed and realistic experience, as well as the ability to further customize the feel, if this is important to you. Entschuldigung, ich, es ist für mich ein bisschen amüsant, also... Weil sich da nichts bewegt. Another major thing to consider is that on a console you're going to be locked to a single monitor or TV display, as support for triple screens is currently not available on either PlayStation or Xbox. So if this is something that you are either interested in now or later on, you may want to consider using a PC. It's important to note that not all wheels and pedals are compatible with consoles, but many of Is this the bist du das? Das bist du. Of them are. From manufacturers like Fnatic, Thrustmaster and Logitech to name a few, they all offer versions of their wheelbases that work with either PlayStation or Xbox, but usually just one or the other. In most cases, all those same wheelbases are compatible with a PC if you decided to upgrade later on. However, I found you will be a bit limited when it comes to pedals, but usually just those in the higher end market as they need to connect directly via USB to a computer. Also, as it relates to accessories, things like shifters and handbrakes, there are many that offer console support, but again, the higher end units will be reserved to be used on a PC only. As well as additional things like button boxes or dash displays, all these accessories are typically reserved for the PC user only. Now I realize not everyone has the budget to blow on building a brand new gaming PC, and the cost of parts has definitely increased over the last couple of years. But I would say if you already own a decently spec computer for gaming, I would stick with this. If you think this is going to be more than just a casual hobby, as you'll definitely have more options when it comes to titles, customizability, and hardware support down the road. Now that being said, this doesn't mean you're going to have less fun using a console. A lot of fun can be had with reliable equipment and one of the latest gen consoles. But it's best to decide what you want to get out of the hobby in the long run. Me personally, using both and coming from using a console to a PC, I definitely got more out of my equipment 
and the access to other titles was definitely appreciated from using a computer. Now there are several things to consider when it comes to selecting a wheelbase and the various manufacturer ecosystems of steering wheels available to you may be a bit confusing, but I'm going to try to break it down as simple as possible for you. At the entry level, you're typically going to find belt driven wheels. These use a belt and a motor essentially to simulate the steering effects and force feedback. Some are better than others at doing this and can provide a little more detail. The de das sieht mittlerweile auch so aus. Okay, okay. Details critical to understand. Ich, ich dachte, er hat gerade die äh, die T880. Your vehicle is reacting things like understeer or oversteer or the surface of the track itself. However, for the best experience, a direct drive wheel is going to give you a much more realistic feeling and that additional detail. If your budget can afford it, I would definitely recommend looking at a direct drive wheel. You're certainly not going to regret it. The market now has many great affordable options from companies like Fnatic, Logitech, Thrustmaster and Mazda Racing just to name a few. But here's where it gets a bit more complicated. Is within the Wenn ich so ein Video machen würde, ich würde niemals Fnatic aufzählen. Nee. Niemals würde ich überhaupt würde ich nicht machen. Würde ich nicht in einer Silbe würde ich das erwähnen und auch nicht als Video mit einbauen. Nee. Direct drive wheels, you have different peak levels of torque, which is measured in newton meters. This ultimately affects the strength of the forces the wheel can replicate. Wheels in this market typically range from 8 newton meters at the entry level all the way up to 35 newton meters on the most high end wheels from manufacturers like SimiQ. For most, I've heard the sweet spot is around 12 to 16 newton meters. But if you want maximum simulation, you're going to want to look at a wheelbase that can produce 20 newton meters. Äh, doch, geht auch ohne, Hector. Mosa. Mosa funktioniert auch an der Konsole. Up. I personally went with a Fnatic DD1 with a peak torque output of 20 Newton meter. Ja, das ist mir egal, ob die Leute mich hassen oder nicht. Also wirklich, das ist mir völlig schnuppe, ob Fnatic Menschen mich nicht mögen. Ich habe einfach keine guten Erfahrungen damit gemacht. Mit vier Wheelbases, die ich in der Hand hatte und gefahren. Drei? Vier? Mm -mm. Nein? As I wanted to have the most realistic experience as possible. My best advice is to buy the best your budget can afford. Or wait and save a bit if you feel like you're someone who is going to enjoy sim racing for the long run and you want to get the most out of it. It likely won't be long before you wish to upgrade if you start with a belt driven wheel. So my best recommendation is to potentially future proof yourself a bit here. That doesn't mean you need to rush out right away and buy a SimiQ Pro wheelbase as you can have just as much fun on belt driven wheelbases too but you will be missing out on some additional features and a more realistic driving experience if that's what you're after something essential to consider when selecting a wheelbase obviously outside of if you're using a console or a pc is what steering wheels will be compatible which is critical because many manufacturers only offer support for specific wheel rims in the case of say thrustmaster or logitech You'll typically be limited in most cases to the wheels that come with the bases or ones that they sell. Fnatic on the other hand has a vast number of rims or hubs that you can then mount different wheel rims to, but will always require that you have one of their podium hubs or universal hubs as the starting point. Still, you can purchase higher end wheels that connect through USB and use them with your Fnatic wheelbase via that hub. This is an excellent option if you want several different wheels for different cars or games. This works the same way with SimiCube, but in their case they also have wireless support for third-party wheels to eliminate the USB cord. Newer players in this market, like Asatec SimSports, have their wheels but also offer hubs that allow you to connect other compatible wheels, and they say they're working on future deals with third-party wheel companies. If owning multiple wheels is something you want, consider the ecosystem of the wheelbase that you're buying first and what wheels are supported. Next up is pedals, and often overlooked, but this can affect the experience and your performance sometimes more than the wheelbase. So I recommend potentially investing more of your budget here for significant benefits, because being accurate on the brakes and throttle can make a difference in your lap times. So here are some things to consider. Again, compatibility and budget will obviously be your first consideration. And remember, not all pedals are compatible with consoles. Typically those pedals that are included with wheelbases that have console support are in turn going to work with your PlayStation or Xbox. And those pedals typically attach directly to the wheelbase itself. Fnatic, for example, with their Club Sport V3 pedals can connect directly to their wheelbases or a PC directly, meaning they're compatible with both. Also, the 
Von Fanatec ist erstmal A, der Preis katastrophal für das, was man bekommt. Also ich hatte damals eine DD1, die hat mich 1400 Euro gekostet. Selber Preis wie die Simo Cube. Das Force Feedback da drin ist einfach gefühlt nur rohe Gewalt. Egal, was du für Settings einstellst und was du damit machst, ist einfach wirklich nur gefühlt kommt da nur Kraft raus und sonst nichts. Dann hast du den Quick Release, der seit dem ich jetzt im Fanatec ökosystem war, sich immer noch nicht geändert hat. Also ich bin jetzt drei DD1 gefahren und alle haben geknarzt beim Lenken. Also wirklich alle drei haben geknarzt. Dann ist die Software und Treiber sind so semi okay ish und dann hört es halt einfach für den Preis auch schon auf. Ich hatte jetzt die kleine DD, also die CSL-DD habe ich jetzt noch nicht in der Hand gehabt, dazu kann ich nichts sagen, sondern nur in dem High-End-Bereich ist Fanatec einfach nicht gut für das Geld. Also würde ich auch wirklich niemanden empfehlen, auch wenn es in jeder SRO-Serie dasteht und Fanatec wirklich sehr viel Budget hat, kannst du dir für 1400 Euro einfach was viel Geiles kaufen. Console or PC, depending on how you für, das Wheel, für den Wheelbase-Preis. But Hoysenwell pedals, for example, are only compatible with PC and require a dedicated USB connection to the computer. Now, there are a few different categories for pedals, so let's review. The first is what I would call high-end pedals. Typically, you're going to see much more mechanical and a robust build quality here to handle some pretty high braking forces that are close to what you'd see in a real-life race car. You tend to find pedals in this category with hydraulic dampers installed at the very top of that. Doch, haben wir gestern Lekiam zusammengebaut. Äh, wir haben gestern dazu, ich glaube, 50 Minuten lang haben wir, äh, ich glaube, acht verschiedene Varianten von Rigs zusammengestellt. Kommt demnächst bei YouTube. Von, ich glaube, das günstigste war 760 Euro, aber mit Rig und allem Pipapo bis 23.000 Euro. Also die 23.000 Euro war, wenn Geld keine Rolle mehr spielt. Und die anderen waren so... Uh, Wheelbase, Sitz etc. pp. ohne PC, ohne Monitor, das kommt dann demnächst bei YouTube. A budget range. When hydraulic damping is executed right, it can feel amazing. Hydraulic compression is something that elastomer and rubber dampers and other pedal sets can't reproduce. The second type is prevalent in many mid to high end tier pedals, which are load cells, also known as forced transducers. Unlike a potentiometer, which is found on more entry level pedal sets, you can put much higher loads through a load cell. Measuring the force as an electric. 23.000 Euro findest du, wenn Geld keine Rolle spielt, günstig? Okay. Nochmal, was willst du für 5 Millionen kaufen? Also bei 23.000, wie wir gestern da reingebuddert haben, hast du vielleicht noch einen Spielraum bis hoch zu 30 und dann sitzt du in Top of, äh, also Top of the Line Stuff drin. Was zum Fick willst du für 5 Millionen kaufen? dir ein richtiges Auto hinstellen und dich da reinsetzen. Wir reden ja hier von einem Racing Rig, ne? Was willst du dir für 5 Millionen, also wirklich jetzt, was, was willst du dir kaufen? Willst du dir einen äh, Bugatti kaufen und da deinen Simbrick reinbauen? Das ist doch, das ist wieder Äpfel und Birnen so. Also für 23.000 hast du Simo Q pedale dran, D-Box, also äh, du hast schon Motion dran, fette Monitor dran, einen ordentlichen Sitz etc. pp. Da könntest du vielleicht, sagen wir mal, bis 30.000 könntest du noch hochgehen. Wenn du deinen Rechner noch mit dazu rechnest, mit einer 4090 drin und dem ganzen Top-of-the-Line-Kram, kannst du nochmal 5,5 Scheine drauf, ich bist bei 35.000. Für 35.000 hast du Top-of-the-Line gekauft. Ja, aber da ist nichts, was du für 5 Millionen kaufen kannst. Du kannst für 5 Millionen nichts kaufen. Du kannst dir für 5 Millionen deinen Rig vergolden lassen. Wir reden von Sim-Racing-Stuff. Das ist schon bei 23k sind Top-of-the-Line-Sachen drin. Das Einzige, was du noch machen kannst, wäre zu sagen, komm, ich lass mir jetzt von Audi und kauf mir das originale Audi- oder Porsche-Lenkrad. Das kannst du dann vielleicht auch noch mal, aber da kommst du doch bei, bei, bei Weitem nicht an das Geld ran. There's no perfect sim racing setup. It's what works best for you at the end of the day. So please let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I'll do my best to respond directly to everyone. Also, let me know what you're planning for your setup, or maybe you're planning an upgrade. I would love to see what you bought and why, and I'm sure we can all benefit from the feedback here. That's good. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you're considering getting into this hobby and love cars and racing, I don't think you'll regret it. There is much fun to be had in a community full of like-minded people that are extremely passionate and knowledgeable. So I encourage you to reach out and get involved in groups online. 
Thanks for watching. Stay safe and happy racing. Also größtenteils würde ich ihm schon zustimmen. Ein, zwei Sachen würde ich persönlich nicht so machen aus der Erfahrung raus, aber größtenteils ist das schon gut. Also was heißt schon gut, ist genau richtig. So, Punkt. Also ich persönlich würde bei den Monitor-Geschichten... Äh, Monitor ist wirklich... Also bei Monitoren, finde ich persönlich, ist es nur eine Platzfrage. Also wenn du keinen Platz hast für einen Triple Screen, ist Ultra Wide gut. Wenn du Platz hast, ist Triple Screen unschlagbar. So, und dann kommt noch die Frage, ob du den passenden Rechner hast, um Triple Screen zu fahren. Also ich meine, iRacing kannst du ja fast auf dem Toaster fahren, würde ich jetzt mal äh, behaupten. Aber das sind halt wirklich so, gerade was, mh, was so Langzeit angeht, man sollte sich wirklich darüber Gedanken machen oder mit Menschen darüber sprechen, die schon etwas länger dabei sind, was das Upgraden angeht. Weil es gibt super viele Menschen, die kaufen sich diese Fertigdinger, also diese Fertigstahlrohre, äh, das würde ich echt niemandem empfehlen. Wirklich niemanden. Würde ich, also auch nicht als, als Stand oder so, weil das kann man sich auch aus Aluprofile bauen. Weil Aluprofile kannst du immer wieder verwenden. Also ich habe selbst noch im Schrank Aluprofile liegen, die finden irgendwo, finden die immer einen Platz. Und keine Aluprofile zu nutzen, ist nicht weise für die Zukunft. Bei mir ging halt Triple nicht so easy, da ich zwei Monitore am normalen Tisch habe und so viele Anschlüsse hat die GPU nicht. Naja, sage ich ja, dann ist das halt eine Frage vom Rechner. Aber Triple Screen ist am Ende wirklich, ähm, also Triple Screen ist am Ende wirklich das Ding. Und beim, beim Monitor Stand zum Beispiel, wenn du alle Profile ka hast, kannst du Logo, also kannst du wirklich dir ein Stand kaufen und du kannst dir halt die Upgrades dazu kaufen. Und so ist das halt bei, bei sagen wir mal, du gehst in diese Ökosysteme rein von gewissen Herstellern, dann, ah, ich weiß auch nicht, also von diesen Ökosystemen halte ich persönlich auch nicht so viel in so einem Ökosystem drin zu sein. Ich würde es persönlich, finde ich es immer cleverer, unabhängig davon zu sein. Und ich würde, bei also wirklich auf Wiegen und Brechen würde ich nicht Fanatec empfehlen, weil das ist für... Für das Geld? Nee. Es gibt halt so viel schönere Sachen für, für das Geld, die du dir kaufen kannst mittlerweile. Und das ist das Schöne an dem immer wachsenden äh, Markt des Sim Racings, dass man nicht nur noch auf irgendwie zwei Brands oder so limitiert ist. Das ist halt echt schön.